All right, Dark Souls enthusiasts, let's jump in here talking about some tactica regarding summons. Going in to fight that boss, do you spend those souls? Do you spend that currency? And do you summon that fallen warrior to fight for you? That's what we're going to explore um, jumping into this vlog. I want to frame and uh, first say that how Dark Souls was handled in terms of distribution they made the decision, and, and I love Dark Souls. If you've been following my channel, I'm, I'm a massive Dark Souls enthusiast. Um, it works for me personally on a lot of levels. But with how they've broken out the distribution, the core needs a lot of expansions. Yes, you can play the core on your own. It's, it's more of a, I won't say it's crippleware, but it's more of a taste to get the full impact of the game, not only making in tactical decisions, but to prevent it from becoming grindy you need some of the expansions. And and the two that I consider auto-include, before we get into mega bosses, obviously the core, would be the extra heroes, the extra player characters, so you have that diversity and you have those items, but also pulling in the invaders and the summons. Simply because with them, now you add in the chance to get ambushed. Now you add in, when you fight the mini boss or main boss, you add in um, another player, another form of AI. You know, one of the criticisms of Dark Souls is it's grindy. And they did do an excellent job of transferring that over from a video game digital format onto an analog. I don't believe necessarily in house ruling it. There are variants out there, quick runs, um, double souls, ways to speed up the game, ways to make it not as grindy. And I'll leave that aside. But if you're playing it as intended, the idea is you make that first run through and it's new. You flip that card. Wow, this is what I'm encountering. And the early encounters, when you grind through again, they're not as tactically exciting. The medium to heavyweight encounters on your way to the fog gate, even when you're aware of what they are, especially in the core with sentinels and some of the more powerful combinations, they can be a challenge a couple of runs through. After you've leveled up a little bit and got some gear, they're still a challenge. So they still keep you on your toes. The one thing that destroys the sameness, that destroys this like, all right, grind through again, grind through again, is having the chance of an invader dropping, having that. So I consider that an auto-include, and um, I always play with them. Now, the challenge with this, of course, is it's Dark Souls, so no excuses. you got to get good. When and how these drop, um, they're potent. They're powerful. And you really, really have to be tactically prepared. There is the possibility that an invader drops early and just punks you, just destroys you. Now, okay, um, you've dropped some souls, you've dropped some stuff, maybe. You've also burned a spark. And, and that that's a big problem if it's early on, you've missed out on that whole um, complete circle, that whole complete run. But that's just called... Dark Souls and um, the idea of that swinginess, you know, it's found in other games. It's it's found in other games. A perfect example would be Zombie Side Invader. Excuse me, Zombie Side Black Plague. Um, Invader, they tweaked it a little bit. Zombie Side Black Plague, which is a game that I love. Early on, um, when you're the actors, when your characters, when your heroes haven't really leveled up yet, they don't have much gear, they don't have other activations. When you enter and search, you draw a card. When the zombies spawn, you draw from a deck of cards. Well, in that deck, and we're just talking core right now as an illustration, there's an abomination. There's there's a super zombie in there, which is almost impossible to kill um, unless you have some very, very powerful assets or have the ability to blast it with um, the dragon's alchemical fire. That could spawn turn one. You know, you mix the cards up. There's some sort of mathematical formula in there. You mix those cards up. Uh, if there's three abomination spawns and it's distributed, the odds are low that you're going to pull it, but I've pulled it. So now what that means tactically in Zombie Side Black Plague, I have to be running. Now I don't have as much time to search and kind of know the zombie horde is on the other side of the table. It's getting closer and closer. Like, no, I got to keep moving. So it changes it. So I'm not opposed to an invader jumping back to Dark Souls, um, an invader dropping right away. And seeing how that aspect goes. It's, it's just part of the game. 
when you include that, um, it spices things up very, very nicely. Now, let's talk about the summons going in. And what's the perspective to take on those? Dark Souls, Dark Souls almost demands that you play competitively. And when I say competitively in terms of um, board games, even playing solo is the fact that it is a long game. And that's not good or bad. It's a long game and it's a winner take all zero sum game. You either win or lose. And and part of the nerd rage is investing real physical time into a game. You have to be willing to do that. Making it to a final boss fight and getting punked. And there's no do over. Now you could house rule it. You could do first place, second place. You could do someone gets killed, what happens. But rules as written, rules as intended, winner takes all. That takes a certain type of, of tabletop glory. That takes a certain type of perseverance to play through. So from that perspective, um, you need to be very, very mindful of resources. Now you could just play for fun and when I do play, I do try to play for fun. I accept the fact that I'm going to make the best decisions I can. I'm going to look to be able to utilize the dice mechanics the best that I can. But there have been runs that just just things lined up and I got beaten down. And again, welcome to Dark Souls. So we'll have some fun and we'll play it through. In terms of the summons, if I'm playing completely for fun... I pop it off, I activate, we do it. It's always fun to kind of see. It's like a battle within a battle because the summons are controlled AI, the phantoms, and and having them appear and work through fighting with you, it's kind of neat. It's kind of a lot of fun. But at the same time, it takes up soul resources. And they kind of trick you a little bit because it's such a minor amount um, to pull them into the game. What's what's the big deal? Um, At worst, if you're making a run, through three runs, you know, mini, mini boss, main boss, mega boss, is it really costing you that much? Um, especially the fact that even if you're geared up, even if you feel confident, you should never feel confident in Dark Souls, but even if you're feeling confident, it's like, well, I, I can go through and do multiple runs, you know, do the full run, rest, do the full run, rest. What are we really spending? Well, you know, certain gear certain gear requires really powerful stats. And I happen to enjoy, uh, again, there's a lot of house rules in terms of the blacksmith and and buying and selling. I I like the fact that it's a big deck of cards and I don't know what I'm going to get. And usually I can potentially pull, in theory, some worthless stuff or stuff that's not optimized for the character I'm playing. But that's, that's fine. We're in the world of Dark Souls and I'm exploring around and this is the gear... I'm finding I don't have that level of customization. So if we're going to play competitively, I think you have to really look as you move through banking your souls and figuring out what to spend it on. If there's an item that's potentially powerful and you're working your way towards being able to equip it or being able to use it in terms of the stats, yes, literally every single soul counts. And what is the... What's kind of the level going in to what you're fighting in terms of the confidence level? The And I'm not going to give away any spoilers. Uh, the mini bosses, are some of them are easier than others. And I'm not talking about the um, lightweight souls, medium, heavy encounters leading up to them. The placement of the, of the reveal cards on the tiles with, that spawn the minions to fight. I'm talking about the actual AI. You know, you can look at some of the models and get an idea of what the gargoyle is going to do. Certain ones are more challenging than others. So if that's the case, do I really need that summons or am I better off banking every single drop? Is it a drop of soul? Uh, Every single tier of the soul, every single like astral form of the soul, whatever, whatever it's going to be. I am better off banking them, spending them, equipping them and, and pushing through on the gear. So I think that. For the most part, you have to look and scrutinize and say to yourself, well, um, what's available? You know, the pool of items, what we'll do is when we'll pull items, some you can equip right away. Some you are working for and moving ahead. And then there's some items which you might not necessarily equip, but if they have some sockets 
or certain items work well with other combos. I'm not going to equip it right now, but as we make additional runs, if I draw another card or two, another item or two, all of a sudden that might become beast. All of a sudden that might be an amazing combo. I want to make sure I have the um, attributes, spend the souls to equip it. That's very, very important. The last determining factor. So absolutely that pack for the phantoms, the invaders, the summons, that, that's just in my mind an auto-include and I always play with it. But in terms of when to spend those souls, multiplayer game versus single player game. And um, by that, I don't mean the actual people playing. You can do solo. Are you playing one character or multiples? The one character gets more souls but you spend all the souls on that character. So I really just have to focus on the one character. If you're playing two, three, or four characters, again, either solo or with your friends, if one of them dies, you're in trouble. So yes, if you need that item, uh, we got our souls, we beat the encounter. If I can bump your attribute and now you have a powerful item, absolutely, take all the souls and spend it. I mean, it's a great, a great, great cooperative team game. But on the other side, um, I can't neglect my character or other characters. We've got to share the souls, share the wealth a, a little bit. Because if one player lags behind significantly, that puts them at risk, especially as uh, some of the AI becomes more complicated and starts to overlap. You might um, send the more powerful characters forward, but in terms of targeting, in terms of aggro, in terms of movement, in terms of how things interact, it's, it's, you're not safe anywhere on that tile. There, there is no safe node from that perspective. So in that case, too, um, you might see certain characters start to pull ahead and you say, well, we're getting pretty powerful. But if someone starts to lag behind, they need every single soul that they can get. That said, I usually do try to summon again because it's kind of fun to watch the battle. It's kind of fun to see how it plays out. But I would leave you and say Tactica in terms of building a list. It looks like a small amount and it's the final going in. What's the big deal? It, it can and it does add up.